Hello everyone, Mike Rivera here with FCP Euro. Today we're in our shop with our project MK6 GTI and we're going to walk you through the process of replacing the front brakes using OEM components from Zimmerman and Texar. We put this kit together and today we're going to show you how to get it done. One thing I want to do is show you that you can do this on your own at home with basic hand tools. Let's get started. All right guys, as we have mentioned, we do have the luxury of a lift and most of the power tools that may make this shop a lot easier for you. But since we understand that most people don't have that particular luxury, we want to show you how to get this done in your own driveway. We're going to start by removing the protective caps over the lug bolts on most Volkswagens. You can typically use a pick to pry them out gently. Make sure you don't mar the surface of the wheel. Pull them out. Now with those caps out of the way, we can go ahead and remove or loosen our wheel bolts. What I like to use is this CTA Tools 17 millimeter wheel nut and bolt socket. It's specifically designed to protect the inner portion of the wheel with this plastic sheet that goes around the socket. What we're doing here is just breaking them free. Remember, this car will have, as most will, a uh, wheel lock. So make sure to grab that before you get started. Okay, with the front wheel bolts loosened, I like to identify the jacking point on the rear so that I can begin to lift the car up and safely position a jack on the front just to hold everything in place. I like to identify first where the rear pinch weld is. Get my jack in position. Once we have the front wheel up and where we need it to be, we can come in with our jack, find the front pinch weld, and slowly come down on our jack. All right, now that we have the front properly supported, we can go ahead and take out our lug bolt using a half inch ratchet on the same CTA Tools 17 millimeter socket. Before I remove the last two, I'm gonna go in with my Lyle wheel hanger tool set and grab a M14 by 1.5 thread hanger. And what this will allow me to do is once I remove that final bolt, the wheel won't just fall off. It'll sit, rest on the hanger and then I can continue doing my work. See how that catches the wheel? Great tool. All right, now we can move on to remove this anti-rattle clip on the front and the two caps for the boots on the guide pins on the rear. I like to take a screwdriver to kind of wedge it out of position. Be careful, I like to hold it because it doesn't want to fly out at you. So be careful. And at the rear, these plastic boots that cover the guide pins. It's gonna be two. All right, now that we have the boots out, we can go ahead and disconnect our brake pad sensor from the connector mounted on the back of the spindle. You're gonna feel for a tab on the pad. Push down and slide it out of the way. Now there should be nothing holding our caliper in place. I like to come in with a hanger, just so I can prepare the caliper. And hang it out of the way. That way it's not dangling on the brake hose. That way I can continue working. Removing the old set of pads. And moving on to removing the bracket from the spindle. All right, one of the only specialty tools that you may need for this job is a brake caliper tool. This tool pushes the piston back into the caliper so that you can have enough room for the new pads that we're gonna go ahead and put in. Not something most people will need in their toolbox or something that you may wanna buy, but 
it's something that you can rent, use for the time being, and bring it back. Most auto parts places will have something like this locally, and again, you don't have to buy it, you can just get it when you need it and return it. it sits inside the caliper. Once you feel it get tight, you can come in with a 19 millimeter socket on a ratchet. All right, with the piston retracted inside the caliper, we can now focus our attention on the caliper bracket. There are two 21 millimeter bolts, large bolts holding the bracket to the back of the spindle. What I like to do is get it started with a hammer. I have good contact with the wrench. With the bolt broken free, I can come in with a ratchet and get it the rest of the way there. Now we can repeat the process on the top bolt. All right, from here you can come in with a T30 Torx bit on a ratchet and remove the brake rotor set screw. With the brake rotor set screw out of the place, you can now remove the rotor from the hub. More often than not, the rust buildup on the hub will make the rotor surface on the hub a little bit tight, so it might take you a couple whacks with a hammer to get it free. You don't wanna go crazy hitting it, you just wanna give it some light taps in order to free it off, as you don't wanna damage the hub. All right, now that we have our old rotor removed, we can come in with our replacement Zimmerman one. Be sure to locate it on the hub surface so that the brake rotor set screw hole lines up and you can start threading in the screw and just hand tighten. With the rotor installed and in place we can come back in with our caliper mounting bracket, locate the two 21 millimeter bolts that secure it to the spindle and start threading them in by hand. Using a 21 millimeter socket on a half inch ratchet we can go ahead and cinch those out. Now we're ready to install our new brake pads. This kit comes with Techstar pads, OE pads, as well as the Techstar Ceratec brake lubricant. I recommend applying a good amount to the rear of the pad, specifically on the ears that slide in and out of the caliper bracket. This rear pad does not have any clips and there is no sensor, so this one is for sure the outside. From here, we're gonna locate these clips inside the piston cup should hear it snap in. We're in place there. We can disconnect the hanger. Come into position here. Make sure everything slides in. At the rear, we have the connector for the pad sensor. Go ahead and slide that one into place. Should hear it click. Okay, we're at the point where we can reinstall our guide pins. I like to make sure that I put the same lubricant onto the guide pins just to make sure that it's nice and well lubricated as the caliper has to slide um, to apply pressure on the friction material onto the disc. So always apply a decent amount onto the guide pins and set them into place. Come back with our seven millimeter hex nut on our 3 8 locate the guide pin on the corresponding slot for the caliper and bring it home. With the guide pins back in place we're going to go ahead with our rubber caps and cover them. All right the last step is installing our new anti-rattle clip.
Last step that you just saw me do was install the anti-rattle spring onto the caliper. This part is a little bit tricky as you do have to wrestle the spring into these two notches and then force either one ear or the other onto the corresponding slot onto the bracket. Might take you a few uh, tries to get it done right, but after you got it into place nice and solid, job is almost done. Now that we got the brakes and pads all buttoned up, we can come back in with our Lyle tool for hanging the wheel so we can get ready, get ready to mount it back up. This is also a great, great tool for any European auto enthusiast. Most European cars use wheel bolts instead of studs and nuts, so having this, tool, this wheel hanger tool set from Lyle is a great, great tool to have. Positions the wheel exactly where it needs to be, and I can step away, do whatever I have to do, and the wheel's gonna stay in one spot. This here is the last step, just installing my wheel bolts by hand at first, of course. To remove my hangers. Come in with my wheel lock. All right, after we torque the wheels down to spec, replace our center plastic caps and jack the car down. We can go ahead and repeat the process on the opposite side. Once both sides are completed, I recommend that you go out and bed the brakes. That way the friction material has a nice good bedded surface onto the rotor and make sure that you extend the life of the brake package. Thanks for joining us today as we show you how to do a DIY on the front brakes on this MK6 GTI. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time.